Okay, hello everyone. Good day to you. We're glad to have you again on another edition of ATP Live. And we're excited, it's the last month of the year. We thank God for keeping us through it all. It's, and I'll say happy new month. Welcome to December. Okay, today we're gonna to be talking about dietary choices for toddlers and preschoolers. I know mommies and daddies out there have been having challenges with what should I give my baby? What can they eat? What can they eat at this age? What's the best meal? What's the best thing? But before we go into that, I'd like you to please share the video, invite your friends, let them join us, watch. And guess what? You have opportunity to win prizes today. Hooray! So don't win it alone. Invite your friends so that they can be a part of the show to learn and also have an opportunity to win. As usual, Dr. Bimi is in the house today. Dr. Bimi Solabwe day. Good morning. We're happy to have you. How are you doing, Ma? Yeah, good morning, everyone. And uh, welcome to Ask the Pediatrician Life. It's a beautiful Saturday morning. And we are so, I'm so excited to be here. And thank you so much for everyone that is joining us uh, today. And I think this is, you know, one of the most important uh, program that uh, the topic we'll be discussing today is also one of the most important uh, topic that uh, parents like to talk about all the time. <laughs> and today there I have 
gifts courtesy of our sponsors and so i will just say you i'm going to give you the gifts later on uh, so you're all welcome to join us and as usual uh, if you have your comments you have your questions you can drop it for us and then we'll be able to take them and also like i say kindly invite your friends and your family to be part of our atp live and um, ATP Live today is brought to you uh, with the support of PIC uh, 456. All right. Thank you, Dr. Bimi. Thank you, PIC 456. So I hope you have been calling your friends to join in so that you don't get to learn alone. All right. Dietary choices for toddlers and preschoolers. Hmm. Dr. Bimi, you know I me. Mean? <laughs> I am a teacher. I'm a preschool teacher. And yeah. we see all sorts of things. I mean meals that you know children bring to school sometimes we are like ah ah for a child and then sometimes we're like okay maybe maybe not but you are the expert i think you should tell us generally is there any generally acceptable meal for for toddlers and preschoolers are there things they shouldn't take or are there things they should take more okay so um okay thank you so much for your question i'm just going to say that for the very first person that joined ATP Live this morning, you'll be getting the very first gifts that we have for you. Yeah, I'll pick up five six, and that is uh, Ogo Okolo. So you're the very first person to comment, you're the very first person to join us, and I can see that you're also <laughs> inviting your friends to be part of the program. Yeah. So you have the first uh, prize winner, so congratulations to Ogo Okolo, you have won yourself a product pack from uh, Pick 456. <laughs> so uh, I hope you will keep on joining us uh, so that you can win uh, more gifts. More All right, so for those who are just joining, just know that I still have more gifts for you. So just um, watch out and then you will see uh your gate you will get your gates okay so now let's go back to uh dietary choices for uh, for toddlers and preschoolers preschoolers so um i'm going to ask a question okay please don't go and google it <laughs> <laughs> and don't go and spy uh, your books but um anyway the very first person that gets it gets my prize so right. i want to yes. tell me i want to to tell me who is a who is a who is a toddler and who is a preschooler that's the uh, second question for the next uh, question i'm going to give you so i want you to tell me who is a toddler and who okay. is a preschooler what age specifically what age, age. About, so that we know that we're on the same page so that will be the, that will be the next person that will win uh our gift this morning okay so uh, let's go on so um why are we talking about dietary choices just like what i said uh and i always say that one of the things uh, parents struggle with is how to feed their children somehow it is very easy for the first six months of life because it's breast milk you don't need to cook it you don't need to do anything the, the breast milk is just there you just wake up and you feed your baby and that's it and then most parents begin to struggle with uh after the first six months when they need to introduce uh the um the other food you know they are now trying to introduce other food to the to the child so that is when the, the struggle comes in and um we we uh we've had a lot of discussion about complementary feeding how to introduce complementary feeding and things like that and one thing we need to know is that by the end of that first one year of life we expect yeah. the infants now to be introduced to the full family diet so that is what we expect because today is not about how to make your baby feed another <laughs> <I'm not going laughs> <laughs> so basically, you, at the end of the first one year, your, your child should be basically eating from the household pots. You know, that's pots. what I'm saying. So basically, whatever you guys are eating, that is what the children also should be eating as well. Um, uh, um, unfortunately, some parents don't get that. So 
or some parents get that, but then they also struggle with uh, how to, I mean, because most time children don't like maybe what you are eating, so they struggle yeah. with that area yeah. as well. But more than that, we also need to recognize that even though we're saying that these uh, um, children are no longer your, um, they are now supposed to be eating the family diet, but you should yeah. recognize that yeah. they are still growing children. They, mm -hmm. they still have some other uh, dietary needs that yes. are yes. different, or uh, yes, that is that are different from what you as an adult will normally eat. Yes, I mean what what you are, as an adult will require, and that mm -hmm. is why it's important that we we talk about. Um, uh, that today because right. I want right. parents to know that even though they are not on the family diet, they are not supposed to, their home requirements are still quite different because they are still growing. And especially they are still growing very rapidly. And then they are also, their brain is still developing. If you remember, if mm -hmm. those of you that joined us last week, remember we talked about uh, the fact that the brain is one organ in the body that is not yet fully formed at birth and that 95 yeah. percent of the brain development is still occurring in the first uh five years of life so because of that we need to make sure that these children are getting food or, or nutrients that are very essential for brain growth and development and, and you know we, we we also talk about the fact that if you don't get the uh right nutrients at the right time there's also a timing because the brain development is that first five years. If they don't get the right nutrient at the right time, even if you not provide it much later on, uh, you will not be able to, to get it. And so that is where, um, uh, th that's why it's important that we know that the, the food that we give these infants are really, really the right kind of uh, food that they, they need. And so uh, uh, that's what we're going to be talking about today. That even though your infants are now on your normal um diets that you, you i mean like like family but in terms of the the difference i mean in terms of how you put them together then they are they are really really uh they see a little bit of difference there are some things you need to give them more and there are some things that you need to give uh uh then then you need to give them more than what you will normally give uh to to the adults you know so i'm, I'm still going to i want to show us like a a if a, a, a pyramid of what are the normal kind of uh food that we should give uh children so but just for you to know that after that then you can always join us and then you can drop your questions uh, for us okay. to answer and i i saw that many of you were trying to attempt my question and i am <laughs> not yet sure i have seen the answer the correct so answer Cynthia oh. is saying um the lights one to two and preschool three to five mm, mm, mm. Yeah, okay the lights is one to 12 months okay and, <laughs> Okay, you see, these are things we talk about every time on uh, HCP. <laughs> but many of you, you don't know that those are very important because it is very important for us as pediatricians. So sometimes you see mothers asking me, uh, my baby, my baby, and I'm like, I mean, oh, they don't put the age of the baby. But as a pediatrician, we take care of children from zero to 18 years. So from yeah. day zero to the time the children are 18 years, they are still pediatricians. So you can imagine we take care of people with, I mean, they are very, very, they are different categories. So we have our way of categorizing them so that when we're talking to each other, we quickly get it so that this is a toddler. So when I'm talking about an infant, it's different from when I'm talking about a toddler and things like that. So you can see why it's so important for you to, to, <laughs> to, to know which age category we're talking about. So anyway, nobody has gotten my answer yet. So I'm still wow. going wow. to keep on um uh, i'm still going to keep waiting for you <laughs> and see whether somebody will get the uh the question that i have okay so but i, I think there's one question amongst yeah. the answers okay um about a four months old baby that stops breastfeeding like i, I couldn't pick it 
very fast. Okay, I'll just go down and look at the question. Yeah, okay. So, like, uh, this today we're going to talk about Zai's Richardson's in toddlers and preschoolers. So, this question is not really because your baby is you know, still small. <laughs> So your baby is not at all an infant. So let me just give you guys a clue. An infant uh, is a baby between two months and 12 months. So those of you that are saying... You have answered the question already. I've I've answered the question, but I've I've not fully answered it. But I've I've told them... So we have what we call newborns. And newborns are zero to... Two months. uh, Zero to... uh, 20 days basically and then we have the um uh, what's it called now we also have the uh infants which is where we come from after that 20 days after one month to one one year so that's what i'm going to talk about so now let's go on and talk about the various um um uh, sorry can i just refresh i need to get my slide Okay, let me see whether I'll be able to get it now. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, so basically we talk about five different five uh, food groups. And uh, these are the groups where we get food from. So we have the, the fats and the oil. We have the... Um, um, you have the carbohydrates where the energy providing food, then you have your dairies and you have the water and all that. So these are the various, uh, 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 the, the different classes of food, um, food groups for, uh, uh, for children. So, and it is very important that when children are eating this food that they get it right and uh i will try and show us this food it's like a pyramid the way it is a pyramid is just to tell us the fact that um, these are the ones that are really you know uh uh the, the big ones the ones at the bottom the children need to eat more of them whereas they need to eat a little of the one at the at the, at the top, you know, so that's what a pyramid is all about. I will just share, share my screen so that you have an idea of what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, okay. Okay, uh, uh, can you guys see the screen now? Uh, not yet. Okay, let me just add it to the broadcast and I'll make it solo. So in this, you can actually see the uh, the screen of what the food uh, pyramid is. And you can see at the bottom, you have what we call the energy-giving foods or the most of them they are carbohydrates so this is where we need to give more to the children because remember that these are children they are still growing and they are running you know that's why you need to tell me who a preschooler and it's all like it's obviously nobody is getting my question so i'm going to give you the <laughs> and so but that <laughs> age group they are very energetic they are running they are very so they need to eat a lot of energy giving foods so things like bread things like potatoes things like cereals they need to eat lots of that that is why it's at the bottom of the pyramid the next week they need to eat also a lot of what we call fruits and vegetables these are the uh minerals or what we call the welfare food because they need a lot of vitamins and things like that so uh, that those are the next thing and the next week you also have cheese milk dairy this is also what uh the children is and then towards the end you have the protein or where you get your meat your fish and you know and things like that 
and they, they, they just don't need as much of that like that of the energy giving food. And then at the very top of it, they need the fats and the oil and maybe some of the sweets. And they don't really need this one uh, very, uh, very sparingly. So it's very important that we get this uh, food uh, pyramid that will still be on for a while. And the reason why it's important for us to get is that children must eat from all these various groups. You know, excuse me. It's important Sorry. that <clears throat> it's important that we, when we are giving food to children, we don't just give. Which is one of the errors that we te parents tend to make a lot. We tend to give from only one of the food group. So we see a lot of parents either doing the carbohydrates or the the one at the lower base, the bread. So everybody just bread and tea. He likes bread and tea. He likes uh, <laughs> these uh, noodles and things like that, which is just only one one uh, of the one of the uh, uh uh one of them you know it is not having all the possible uh, uh food so what if you we also have a concept of food place so in other words every time you're serving your children food children must have portions at least we always say at least four from each of these five food groups and of course water is also there water is we sometimes sometimes we put it among the group sometimes we leave it on its own but you, you can make it the sixth group if you want but water must also be there all the time and not junks or sweets and stuff like that must be water so it is important that when you're giving your your toddlers and your preschoolers food that you have all these various food groups so that it will give them the right kind of mix of what they need so they are growing they have uh, they are very active so they need food that will keep them active that's that will provide energy but they're also growing so they need the protein they also need the dairy because they need strong bones for the calcium they also need things like dha and all that from the dairy that will help with their brain uh, development so these are the various things uh, that the children need so the fats you know they don't need as much of them you know and the sweat so that's why it's at the very top of the pyramid okay so that is what we talk about the various uh, food groups okay so nobody got my question i will just give the answer to you um <laughs> okay I, I think some people are the timing you're answering the question is too late for me to take it that you're actually getting it by yourself right, so, so so when we talk about toddlers toddlers is children age one year to three years so three one so three years we call them toddlers i mean so from after three to five years we call them preschoolers because in most schools children start school at age of six years and when we talk about school we're talking about real school you know <laughs> primary school i know that most nigerian mothers start their own school at say uh, <laughs> when do they start you are the one teaching the children yeah, teaching <laughs> two months <me>. sometimes <laughs> <laughs> so yes that's the truth uh, yeah, so so that that's that's what I'm saying. That's you get that anomaly in Nigeria. But I did it with pediatricians who prefer we when we talk about school age children, we are talking about children six and uh, twelve years, and then we have our teenagers. So you at least you've learned how the pediatrician categorizes the children. But today we are talking about the age group of uh one to three years, which are the toddlers, and we're talking about the age group of uh three, three to five, five years, which are the preschoolers. So we're talking from one to five so that is the age group we're talking about so we've talked about in previous ones about the newborns and exclusive breastfeeding age then from six months to one year that's when they start complementary feeding and we'll talk about how you can go increasing the complementary feeding gradually and then by one year we expect children to be on full family diet they should be eating exactly from the family pot. They should be eating exactly what every other person is eating. But what we are saying is that when you're feeding them, you need to pick from all this. So in each of the food categories, you can you, you, you can use what you have in your community or in your own kitchen. In other words, make them and also try variety. So in other words, if you say, okay, yes, I want to combine the food and put, okay, something from the energy given food, either the bread or the, the cereals or the carbohydrates, then you, it's not as if you must always use one 
of those all the time. In other words, so if you use cereal, if you use, uh, let's say, bread as the cereal in the morning, uh, as the carbohydrates or energy providing food in the morning, in the afternoon, you should not use bread again. You understand? You can try, okay, this time around, I'm going to use rice as the energy giving food at the bottom of the pyramid. Okay, so let's say, for example, you went to pick maybe fish as a protein you know source of the you know as the in the in let's say in the morning but in the afternoon it doesn't have to be fish again you can another time it could be egg another time it could be um Chicken. it could be it could be beans it could be you know different things so what we're saying is that but the most important thing is that once you are placing your child's food make sure that the child has at least four out of these food groups right. at least four of them at every given point in time and it's not that difficult you know parents always think it's so hard <laughs> it is not so difficult and sometimes it may be yes it may be helpful sometimes for you to uh to to have a place that is already broken down into those various uh, uh like yeah, into yeah. four portions so that you yeah. will know especially for when you're packing for lunches i mean lunches lunch boxes or what it yeah for the children when they're going to school yeah. you make sure that you put each of these food portions so check is there is there energy providing food there is there protein there is there dairy is there uh fruits and veggies are there there of course make sure your children have water and you know so and then of course fat and oil maybe when you're making the soup or something you would have put a little bit of fat maybe when you're making the bread you could put a little uh, uh butter oh, you know they don't need those one in much quantity so the, that's it that's the most important thing so sometimes people always ask me give me the timetable give me we try not to give you a timetable we try we want you to be creative we want you to be the one to decide what to put on your what child's you plate by yourself but what we're saying is that you can the most important thing is that when you're doing this you put them you you are very conscious that you are putting from this each of these various oh, oh, oh. food clothes and that you you know um and that's uh, you, you that that makes sure that you, that means that you're giving the children something that is uh, uh, balanced and in in the approach. So basically, that's what uh, we we are talking about here. So I think with that, it is a little bit clearer. Uh, yeah. I will now um, uh, begin to take some of our questions, Question. and then we will see. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll try and address some of these issues. We'll take quickly take a message from our sponsors, and then after that, we'll begin to uh, take your questions. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you, Dr. Bremen. Okay, so um, we are ready to take your questions now, and please stop answering the question about toddlers and <laughs> <laughs> stop asking me the questions about toddlers and that because I've moved on from them. Um, I, I've moved on from that because I want I want us to uh, move on to other questions. I've answered the question, and since I've answered the question already. It means you can no longer, uh, you can no longer ask me. Uh, you can no longer get a gift. So don't worry. I will ask another question. So what? Okay. I, what? Don't don't worry about that. So what I want you to do now is to, is to drop your questions on in comment section, and I will be happy to take them so that we can move on. So I will just go back and make sure we've not mixed any question. Okay. I'll be on my thinking else. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, uh, okay. Uh, okay. I'm just trying to go through where the questions are. Oh, oh, so, okay. Yeah. So, uh, goodness that is asking our baby stop um, breastfeeding. That's very unusual, but it is, uh, uh, I'm not sure you said sucking on his form, stop sucking even on his formula to that. A child who is not sucking, I guess what you're saying is that even the baby is not taking both breast milk and even the formula. So a child who is not sucking and who is not taking breast milk is his that child is sick. So basically, so it means you really need to um, you need to get that child to the hospital. 
immediately. So kindly take the child to the hospital. Okay, these are all the people answering my questions. I'll just go through just to say I thank you for attending. Uh, but I'm not giving away any gifts today. I will <laughs> ask another question um, again. And I'm looking for whether I've seen any popular old Facebook. I've been joining us for a long time. Even if I'm, I didn't get it, yeah. If I'm, I will be the one to get it, but I think most of your answers coming after I've already decided to answer. So, yes, you got it, but I think uh, the timeline is too long for me to be sure it was in <laughs> a Google search. <laughs> yeah, so, no, I'm not going to give it away. All right, so thank you, Bami Shile. Okay, so now we'll start, let's start taking our questions. Yes, so we have our questions there. Eh? All right, that's from Precious Humaba. Please, can the food pyramid be shared as a comment so we can see it clearly? Oh, okay. Uh, okay. So what we do, uh, unfortunately, on this platform, we can share pictures on, in comments. comments. Uh, we can share right now. But when we are offline, we'll go, I will try and make sure we'll go and put it up there for you to see very well. So don't worry, we'll, we'll do that uh, subsequently. But... Uh, uh, we'll put it up in a group, and so you, you'll be able to you'll be able to say it very well. So thank you so much for that. Uh, yes, it's something important. Yeah, somebody yeah. Is asking. Okay. Okay. Obioma, Obioma is asking: Does the size or weight of your baby have anything to do with the quality or type of food we give our toddlers? Yeah. The size okay. of the baby at birth. Now, I'm, I, I'm trying to know whether you are doing chicken or egg. Are you saying, are you trying to have, you are free to come and correct me. <laughs> are you saying that is the food that you give that will determine the size of your baby? Or are you saying that because of the size of your baby, you need to give certain amounts of food? So it, it's very important for me to get that very clearly. But let me just answer like the way I think you are asking me. Number one, we pediatricians, we don't want the children to be too fat or anything because I know mothers like this concept of very chubby babies and all that. No, what we want is healthy weight of your baby. So, and if you really follow the food pattern, and one of the things we also talk about, which even though we're not talking about it, is that children must also be active, they must also play. So there's no point, and I'm sure Okpa is nodding. So when they go to school, they really <laughs> keep them busy. They always have PE mm -hmm. and things like that. So it's important that children move. In some schools, they have what they call walk to school week. I mean, once a week. You know, in, in some of us in Nigeria, all our children, we're always taking them with our AC car. You drop them in school, and then they come back with AC car. They stay indoors. In those days, you know, when we were growing up, your children go out, you know, they play and everybody, you know. But these days, children are on their tablets, they are not moving. And that is one of the reasons why the children have so much weight. So obesity in children is really a lot of concern to us nowadays. And it's, it starts from this, it starts even from the uh, infancy. So mother starts thinking, oh, breast milk is not enough. Then you start, you know, using uh, formula. And I keep telling your baby, breast milk is the best for the baby. And sometimes in the presence of just sometimes you overfill them and it can prime them up for obesity. And then when we get to the age when they start complimenting food, we start giving them lots of sweets, lots of junk foods. These are things that make the children to also hard way. So they're what we call sugar babies. Some children are very big, but really it's not a good thing because it is more from all the ways, all the sugars that they are taking. So we want healthy choices and at the same time, we want the children to move. Children normally will move. They are very active. They play. But if you limit them, then they will have so much weight. But if you are giving them the right choices of food, and then they will make sure. So usually for children in preschool age and most of the time, I want them to take about want them to take four meals a day. So if I if I can answer your questions as, as well. So and they, at the same time, you must also have at least two healthy snacks a day as well. So the snacks can come from that your fruits and vegetables. Uh, part of the pyramid and, and they can take it in between but we don't encourage sweets you can see that at the bottom that's where the sweets come in the fats and oil but you, and most of the junk food tends to have loads of saturated fats and all that so we want you to not to give that but if your question is um whether big children need bigger food or you know <laughs> we really need to be sure of the weight because if a child is already too big we may even actually need to reduce the Just amount down. of calories and things so that the child can have appropriate weight. But if the child is malnourished, of course, definitely we need to give uh, appropriate, yeah. we need to give more than the 
average so that the children can regain what they have lost. So that's what I would say. But if, you, if it's not what you're asking, please just ask me the question again and I will clarify for you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Dr. Bimi. Abayomi is asking, hello, doctor. My doctor, my daughter of 18 months, my daughter is 18 months, but she finds it difficult to eat her family food. She prefers her cereal and ugi. Please, how will she get a good balanced diet from cereal she's taking? Yeah, so that's basically what we've been talking about. I'm just trying to show the food uh, pyramid once again. I mean, just for it to be there. Uh, I'm not sure. I want to show it in a way that it will be clearer. Uh, just okay. with me. Okay, yeah, I think this is better. Um, okay. okay, let me remove some of our props so that people can say it. Uh, 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 so this is food pyramids for kids. I, I was looking for it before, but it finally showed up. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> so, uh, so basically, um, it's, it's all boils down to how we started. And this is why we always want us to get it right from the beginning. And I, I always tell mothers, children don't know what is biscuit, they don't know what is this, they don't know anything. It is what we give them that they know. No child right. comes from everyone knowing that, okay, I should take this, I should take that. Most of our mothers, when we are doing complimentary food, we tend to go for that cereal and pop a lot. And we make sure we give the children every three, four hours. That's the only thing they are taking. And that is when they start getting that child. So the child, after a while, some children actually, there are two. Some people, some children get tired of it and stop taking it. Whereas some children really, <laughs> they like yours, I think he prefers it. And she doesn't now want to take other food. So for those who are just starting, please, from six months, make sure that, that's why we say no bottle. And sometimes because the children get these cereals from bottles, it's so they just like it. And that's why sometimes you could get them off that bottle, it's a tug of war. We will say from six months, no bottle, you use plates. You start giving children and you start using some of these foods. So that's start practicing it even right from six months. Some mothers will ask me, oh, my baby doesn't want, my baby like adult food. He doesn't like to take cereal. And I'm like, really, that's the best thing because I don't know why we have the mindset that we must give our children cereal, cereal. From the or pap and all that. And that is one of the things we are trying to correct. So children, even from six months, can start taking all this food we're talking about. The only thing is that at that age, they need it uh, in a semi-mashed or mm -hmm. semi-solid format. So they can't take real bread, for example. They can't take, they can't chew rice. But you can blend your rice. You can, you know, or you can mash this after your very soft cooked it. And you can add your vegetables. You can, you can, you can blend it into it, you know, so that it, it will be like a porridge and the children can take it. And so that, but when they are not getting towards that age one year, one and a half years, then like a toddler, your, your daughter is a toddler, they cannot start eating it without it being mashed or porridge. They can take it as small of solid, but you see the same thing they've been eating. But because you have always this child has always been doing the other, I mean, the part so the child doesn't want to graduate to something like texture. And that's one of the things we talk about even in previous sections that from nine months you begin to introduce finger food gradually, we begin to change the texture from them as well. It is you know, from, from liquid milk to to pour it, porridge, then we begin to give them finger food, solids, then to real food, solid by the time they are on family diet. Mm -hmm. So, but it's not too late. You just that you have, it's a lot of work, but with patience and persistence, perseverance, which is always what I always talk about, all the three Ps, you can get oh, there. Right. So, you, you, it may take a lot of, one of the things I always tell parents to do is that make the children eat when you are eating. Don't force them to eat yeah. on their own as if it's a chore or yeah. it's a punishment. That is one of the, it's sure. make children said like why are they making me say this when every other person is not they, they begin Can to it. do something wrong but just don't force them to just eat together as a family when they see you eating they copy you have you noticed that children really copy us they be like oh this one mommy is eating this thing there will be something interesting there they want to eat your own food instead of <laughs> so, so don't put pressure on them but just model that one called model good eating habits we also have a lot more eating happy tips on our website and on our Facebook group. If you go there, you can read more. No TV, nothing when children are eating. Make eating time very interesting. Make the place very colorful. Buy all those cartoon character plays that look so colorful. All those ones that have different portions. Don't, don't make everything too boring. Let the child see it. 
experiment with colors. That's why fruits come in. Let them have the greens, the red, the purple, the orange. Let all of them be in that place. And you, you know, it's, it's, it's those are some of the things that can get. I know some children are naturally picky eaters. I know, but these are some of the strategies you can see use. And with patience and persistence, you will get there. All right. Thank All right. you, Dr. Wim. Okay, this is a question from Alima. My three-year-old boy does not like to chew food. How can I help him? Yeah, so a three-year-old should be encouraged to chew, you know, uh, and it's also similar to what I just finished answering. If a child has not been given some of those uh, solid early, if the child has been more, more liquid or spirit for a long sure. time, they, they, they don't see why they need to use it. But if from like nine months, when you start giving them finger food, they, you give them snacks, things that they can hold in their hand and run around and be playing and be, you know, biting on, you need to help them. So you just need to make sure you keep on giving things that are texture. I know for that child, you may still not be able to do it fully, but you have to gradually start by making sure, the, 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 you know, giving food that has a lot more grits and then giving things like a finger food. This is a child you can give egg or a para in their hands, or you can give carrots. Let them just be glowing on it. You don't need to sit them down on the table. This is time to eat now. Just give them something like that in the hands. So they'll be going around and be playing with it. And in the process, they begin to, to learn. You know, so it's something, but if you really struggle, because some children really have other uh, maybe developmental issues, that's why they may struggle with that. Then for some children, you may want to, um, uh, you may want to, um, uh, you may want to try some other alternatives or see the, the speech and language therapies. They are very good with helping uh, with that. Okay. That's Let's let's move on. Okay. Uh, One question. Yeah. Okay. Let's keep the questions coming. Dr. Graham is still here. Yeah, I think same question everybody is asking. Is this the is, same? It's almost the, yeah, Fatima. Mm -hmm. How can you help the child when he insists on eating one type of food that is carbohydrates the more that's yeah, Fatima? I think you've had my answer to so your bad meal and by uh, is 18 months old, I only want to say probably it's just the same answer. You just have to gradually start introducing right. food for them. There's no alternative about it. You just have to try. Okay, uh, if I'm mine is having, I hope you have been able to sort out so your alternatives. Okay, so that, but <laughs> that's the problem. Even if you mix the life path, which means you wouldn't get the games, but uh, you can always watch our video after the program yes, and you can also watch it on our YouTube channel. So you will not miss anything. And if you still have questions, you can drop it for us on our Facebook group and we'll be happy to take it. Yeah. All right. This is from Tokpe Akensho. My daughter of two and a half likes a particular cereal, though she eats all adult food very well. My question is, she weighs a lot anytime she's on the cereal. Is it normal or do I discontinue the cereal? Okay. Dr. Wimmy, are you there? Yeah, well, I'm back. Sorry, we need us to refresh briefly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Did you get the question or do I have to take it? Yes, no, don't worry. I've gotten the question. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, there's nothing wrong with a child having a favorite thing, all of us do, I mean, but I'm happy you said that she's also eating all the other food, so she just yeah. actually has her own, I mean, all of us have our favorite food, why don't you have one? I mean, <laughs> yes, that, I <laughs> if you have your way, you will eat it like every day, every day. <laughs> so we all do, there's nothing wrong with that, as long as she's eating other food as well you know you don't need to you don't need to worry about that the most important thing is that the, your child eats other food and it's not just that particular uh, food only but yeah there's nothing wrong with having something you want to eat all the time it's 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 part of um, it's part of life so <laughs> there's no problem <laughs> with that yeah um, but then at the same time I hope it's not that you're. Is is she's on a cereal? Uh, she's on that cereal as a bottle because sometimes people do that. I, I mean, okay, I know you know some of your ba some of your children come to school with the bottle. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, they do. So it's usually by the time they're about one year, we don't want them to be on bottle anymore. So if it, as long as it's not cereal, because I'm I'm very careful when mothers ask me question about cereal and all that. Yeah. I just want to be sure that it's not that the baby goes to school with a bottle of a cereal. And her okay. I think I that the child wheezes a lot. She wants to know if it's the cereal that is causing her to go wee a lot. Oh, 
that, uh, that is a tricky one because we need to really ask more questions. Um, is it, if it is PAP, something like PAP that is so watery, maybe. We can assume, yes. not PAP, uh, because you are not very, very specific. I wouldn't think that is the reason why the child goes to wear a lot, unless the child also takes lots of water. But we also need to be sure because as a pediatrician, I'm also thinking, I hope we are not missing a child who is having um, a urinary tract infection yeah, or that, uh, what we call diabetes insipidus, even diabetes in light too. Some of these things happen in children as well. So sometimes parents don't, um, they don't know that it can happen in children. So if that's the case, I would rather say if your child is weighing a lot before you assume it is, uh, uh, what's it called? The cereal. Cereal. I, I would rather you just get the um, the child check out by the pediatrician first, so that you are sure that the child oh, is having yeah. a medical condition. Because sometimes, uh, sorry to digress, mothers make a lot of assumptions. We make a lot of uh, associations that are not necessarily <laughs> okay. It's not because we get that kind of questions a lot. Mother just asks me a question like, okay, my mother-in-law came visiting and my child said coffee. Maybe it's my mother. No, this, that, I'm, that's just a joke, by the way. I, what I'm trying to say is that sometimes you just wonder, where is the link between this? <laughs> what, what, that. And, you know, for us, we get that a lot. But basically what I'm trying to say is this clearly that before you assume it's a serial, I would rather you get the doctors um, to no. check out the no. child first. And if they now say there's nothing wrong, they've done urine tests and all that, and, and there's nothing wrong, then that is the time for you to... Um, um, to Maybe stop the serial for a while and check. Okay, that's another option. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Okay, is it good to mix cereals? Okay, Fama is asking to what if Fama, I prefer you do a mix from each of the food yeah, groups. Don't just do <laughs> mix of cereals. There's mix nothing wrong with cereals. mix, but it's be, it's far better if you do one cereal and a little from the uh the fruits and veggies, a little it's from the protein, cereals. a little from the fat and the oil, a little from the dairy. So th those are the things that we really want you to do. So, but there's nothing wrong with also doing, because a lot of Nigerian mothers do cereal mess, you know. They do, um, what do you call it? They do maize and millets and they, they, uh, they had oh, so many. And, and some people sell it as a product, you know, but what I would yeah. say that's not the ideal thing. It's, there's nothing wrong with it, but as long as you guys are also adding the other things from the food cereals, then we will be very happy with you okay we'll go you we well, went away you are welcome back <laughs> <laughs> yes our winner for today yeah so okay so i'm going to give another question so that some people can, <laughs> can win this one is going to be a ship one okay so tell me uh who is our sponsor what products they are advertising <laughs> and for which age group that product is for so just tell me that and then you can get the product from them as well. Okay, so let's move on. That's very cheap, Dr. Baby. Yeah, I guess what's buying to give it out. So you can see Dr. Baby is being very generous. <laughs> okay. All right. This is from Ibrahim Sulia. Hello, Doctor. Please, I'd like to have a meal timetable for my baby of six months. Oh yeah. I know somebody's going to ask me. <laughs> ask that question. I know somebody's going to ask me for a meal timetable. Okay, so um What's the name again? Um, Ibrahim Suliat. Suliat. Ibrahim Suliat, yeah. yeah. Suliat, that is the meal time table up there, the food pyramid you're saying. I will put it up in the group in the clearer one. I learned some of you are struggling because I know most people are using their yeah. mobile phone, so it may not be as clear, but I'm sure if you're using a laptop, yeah. it's clearer. So what I'll do is that we'll put it up. So what I want you to do is you create a timetable by yourself. Your child should eat at least four times a day, and with two snacks. So you go through the pyramid and make different combinations. In fact, that's one exercise we, when we did this, some of this thing with the teachers, I was one of the uh, facilitators for that. We, we, it was one of the exercises we actually made the children to do in school, make them create their own meal, giving yeah. them these various food groups. And you tell the children, okay, do your own combination. So 
what we are just saying is that in at every point in time you give four to five out of those food groups you can give all the sex but the most important thing is that you have nothing less than four from them four. so you look at it one from the carbohydrates or energy giving food something from the dairy something from the fruits and the veggies something from the protein like meat and egg and fish and things like that and there's something from fat and also you mix it up and what we're saying is that don't even do the same thing every time so i know mothers like us to do everything for them and one of the things i also do on that tradition is to make it do it yourself so. <laughs> so i'm not going to create any meals and because sometimes in my own family we may prefer to have oats as our cereal in the morning you may not like that oats but another time you prefer um, um, um maybe pop for their own but and also time I, even if i take cereal this morning i'll be get i may be tired of taking cereal i may want to take something else the next morning so that's why it's difficult for somebody to do a meal timetable for you we can give you okay examples and say this is example of okay maybe i can post okay. that as well but i, I don't know. take it as the the oh this is a meal timetable from the p ask the pediatrician so every time even when your child doesn't yes. like that you must also yes. take yes. note of what does my child likes and with what your children like don't there's no point struggling with children over food you will never win i'm telling you you will never win the children will always win you all man but make use of what they like and sometimes some others are very we also can be creative for i know most children don't like vegetables they don't like fruits you can sneak it in into the mm. food so you can blend some of these veggies and you know make it into the cereal. The children will just see the cereal and the pap and I mean and the milk. They don't know that you have blended some other banana and all those things Carrots. inside. The most important thing is that the child gets it, whether sneaked in, eating, <laughs> just make sure that the child gets it. So I think that's what I would just say. Okay, we are rounding right. up. Okay, I'm, I will look whether there's somebody who has one mind. Question. Okay, that's from Obiama. Among the different classes of food, which do we give more out there? Okay. There is the belief that a child that eats beans always tends to be tall. Which of the food <laughs> classes is best for a child that you want to be intelligent? Yeah, I get, I get, I get her perfectly. Uh, I'll just try and see whether I can share my screen. So you will okay. see uh, again what I said um, that it is a, it is a. I'm trying to get the bigger screen. Okay. Oh, can you see my screen now? Okay. Yeah, okay, just a minute. Okay. Okay, yeah, let me make it so, so that you can see it. I'll just hide your question. So you can see that it's a pyramid. Because it's a pyramid, what that means is that the quantity you give so because you are your question I like your question very much is that uh we which one should we give more out what we want to do yeah. and if you look at the right hand side you can see the servings this they have even created the number of servings from each oh. of, but i know in nigeria we don't always understand the concept of serving it's a little bit tricky so i, I don't want to use that but basically you need to give more of carbohydrates to children okay. so the ones that the, the the bigger the size of the pyramid the more you give from that part of it so the baseline the base of the pyramid is we still actually need a lot more carbohydrate people always think oh uh carbohydrate is not good though so because of that we we'll eat too much of protein actually too much of protein will kill it, it kills faster <laughs> So it is yeah. moderation and right combination is the key. So you don't need to give too much of the fats or the beans because it's at the top. But the another thing you need to really understand is that when we say beans, beans is not all protein. In fact, the beans actually have some carbohydrates. So I think there's a particular company, uh, food company, they've come up with actually how you know. So eat most of our food, they are not pure uh, one nutrients. So when people say uh, rice, they think rice is carbohydrate, but rice also has some vitamins, vitamin B12, vitamin mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to say is that each food, each food that you eat is not only one nutrient that it contains. So in your uh, beans, you have your carbohydrate, you see have your protein and all that. Protein. But we normally label them depending on which one is the predominant nutrient in that so when we say something is like a carb, uh, energy giving food like carbohydrate another or like the cereals we are saying that they have ma majorly the 
carbohydrates inside them, but they may have a little bit of protein. They may have a little bit. You understand? So as long as you are doing a mix of your food and you are not eating only one, the likelihood that you will get all the different food components or uh, nutrients because we don't eat nutrients, we eat food. We eat food. We don't eat nutrients. But each of those food has all these nutrients, but they have them in different. Uh, uh, proportions. proportions, but as long as you are mixing up, you will find out that you will get all of the nutrients together. But and you give according to the size of the pyramid. So the bigger the pyramid size, the more, more quantity, the quantity of that one. You that. But remember that it is at each feeding that you must gather them together. It is not like you will eat only carbohydrates in the morning. In the morning. It's like, it's no, you must always combine them together. And I think that's, that, I think if you get this concept of this food pyramid and the food plates, I think that's the most important thing when it comes to dietary choices. But you have a choice. You can see there are so many examples under each of them. So you have a choice to what you pick, whether it's the bread or whether it's a yam or whether it's a maize or whatever, you know. And you don't have to pick the same thing every meal. You can change the the, 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 um, the, choice. the choices, yes, basically, that's what we would do. So, I'm saying, whatever I'm saying, this is a lot of hard work. This is a lot of hard work for every oh, meal. Oh, no, this is like my mother said, <laughs> it's not hard work. It is uh, okay, yeah, I know it's hard work. Okay, let me not say it's not hard work. But what I'm saying. <laughs> Make it something you do routinely, like an habit. With time, you will get it. It's not you will get it. Don't worry. Just yeah. Okay. Some people are answering my question, but nobody is answering you. completely. If you don't answer it completely, you will see no oh. way. I give people don't know that when you are answering question, you have to answer everything. I have three questions. You are answering only one. So I'm sorry. I'm looking for the very first oh. person that will give me. Ah, oh, somebody is even saying this one. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys are. Uh, okay, somebody is getting it to touch. Okay. Uh, okay somebody is getting right. to touch. Um, but I'm not going to see. I'm, I'm looking for the best person. Uh, okay. Okay. And that, but I say which age? You are not putting the age. You are not putting the age, so you are not getting my answer. Okay, yeah, Fatima has got it. <laughs> oh, okay, so Fatima, you are, Fatima. you are my second winner. <laughs> so Fatima has got it. So our sponsor is uh, Friesland Campina, and they are the maker of. Uh, maybe it's a good time to do the advert. They are the maker of Pick Four Five Six, and it's for children age four to. Uh, six years. Maybe I should have asked another question about uh, what is unique about pick four five six. And I, I'm, I'm beginning, <laughs> I'm making it answer now. Okay, so but so, that's, so Fatima, you are the second winner, winner of today. my gift today. You are the so sorry. I'm going to pick the very first person that got it. So every other person, uh, it's, it's sorry about that. I can see many correct answer now coming, but I think oh, Fatima wow, got it right. Yeah. Oh uh, no, but preachers, uh, uh, okay, yeah, preachers tried, but uh, I think Fatima got it first. Okay, okay, maybe we should give preachers a consolation prize. Okay, all right, okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think I, I, I think um, uh, Fatima got it first, but maybe preachers can get a consolation prize. Okay. Okay. Ah, sorry, Obioma. I'm very sorry. Say I am a him, not a her. I'm so sorry. Oh, I am I am very apologies. guilty of this gender bias. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always guilty of gender bias because most times people always say it's not only mothers that have yes, so mostly mothers. And I, okay, for having a father on ACP Life, I'm going to give you a gift. I think you'll be my third prize winner. <laughs> okay, because most times the men don't listen to pediatrician, so I'm very happy when I have a man on the ACP Live. So thank you so much for joining us. I'll, I'll give you a gift as well. Okay, thank okay. you so much. So I think I've got all my gifts winners now. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. we have four. Okay, so we have to run. Our time is up. So I will just summarize what we've been talking about today. Yes. Uh, okay, let me just make sure we didn't miss anybody's question. Because we'll say, yes, so question. Didn't ask my question. <laughs> Okay. Yes, you can. Why not? Very beautiful combination. So your yeah. blended rice as 
the rice is taking care of the carbohydrates, the banana is taking care of fruits and veggies. Oh, add a little bit of maybe crayfish, or add a little bit of uh, fish, titles, fish, or things like that, then you get your protein there. And let the child also have a cup have of a milk. And then you are fine. You and water. You 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 combine very well. You know. You see, I told you it's very easy. It's very, very easy. Okay, some people are still answering my question. Sorry, I've got seen uh, a winner already. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. This has been one of our most. Uh, uh, yeah. So I've got seen that. Okay, so uh, what I'm saying today. So today we've talked about uh, uh, dietary, dietary choices for, uh, for, for toddlers, and toddlers and let me summarize. So I always like to give parents simple things to take away because there are so many things they're thinking about, including school fees and Christmas is coming. And <laughs> so they will remember too much of all my grammar. So basically we're talking about toddlers and uh, um, preschoolers. Plus, and I've already told you, toddlers are children age one to three years, mm -hmm. and preschoolers are children three to five years. And we're saying that this age group of children, they should be on the family diet. And because they are on the family diet, uh, but you also need to know that they are still growing, and especially their brain is still developing. So even though they are on the family diet, you need to make sure they are getting all the proper combination of food and we've talked about the food pyramid i'll just pop it up again so, so that you can see it's finally as we go uh, and it's very important that uh, children get all this food at each meal they're getting and we have told you that we're not going to be a meal timetable we expect you to be creative and creative. pick the most important thing is that you give according to the portion should be from according to the way it is on the pyramid. So the, the base of the pyramid means you give more of that food, whereas at the top you give less of that. But, less. but it is important that the child gets all of them in each meal, at least four out of these five, and including water, which we always call the sixth group of food. And mm -hmm. it's important that this student is healthy, and as they are eating, they are also active, and they are also moving. And so basically, that's what we've been talking about uh, today. So we are true with the program, but if you have questions, I know you always do, and we have not ans answered them, you can go to our Facebook group, uh, just to let you know that this program has been brought to you by Ask the Pediatrician Foundation, and we have our Facebook group, we have our Facebook page, we have our uh, website, website. We have our YouTube channel. So we, we have so many options for where you can get all the information you need. And so you can go to our group and drop your questions there. Don't drop your question on the video because we will not be able to see it after we are Thank gone. You, but if you drop it on the group, we will be able to answer them. And you we will provide uh, our volunteers, moderators, professionals there on the group 24 6. We don't work on Sunday, apologies, but we are there 24 hours, Monday to Saturdays. We, we rest on Sunday. We are there Monday to Saturday to answer all your questions. So you can drop your questions for us and we will be able to answer them. So we want to thank you and we want to also finally thank our sponsor. Um, um pick four five six for uh taking uh uh for uh sponsoring today's show and also for giving the gift to to those who uh won and we still have one money yeah. if you also want to be part of it you can also reach us and we, we can email us on axipediatricians at gmail.com and we'll be able to take her, uh, give you more information on how you can also be part of this program. Of this program. Okay. So thank you so much for joining us. Okay, so yeah. okay, we get to go. Oh, uh, yes, we're good to go. Thank you, Dr. Bimi. It's been very, very enlightening. I've learned something and I hope you've learned something as well. And we we'll look forward to seeing you again next Saturday at 10 a.m. Don't forget to join ATP Live. And our winners for today, we'll get in touch with you. Yes, yeah, so, okay. Yeah, sorry, thank you so much. So, if you want anything on this um program today, I think I know all the winners. Uh, yes, what? I have their list, Dr. Yes, okay, thank you. But I also need you guys to send us your uh names, 
because uh, some people's names are different from what they have on the Facebook. On oh, their Facebook, <laughs> you, can, yes, you, can, you can send us, you can inbox me, or you can send me an email on axipediatricians at gmail.com and with your name, your full address, your phone number, so that we can arrange how you are going to pick your game. So, Ogo, oh, oh, can you tell the names of the winners so that we don't get Ogo, Okolo, <laughs> Fatima, Ochua. Obin, Obin, Obioma, sorry, Oginere, and then Precious. I think you have Precious' surname, but Precious is the consolation gift. Yeah. Mm. And then I think I have a man. Obioma, Oginere, Oginere, Obioma. The man is Obioma. Okay, the man is Obioma, yeah. Okay, yes. so those are the, um, Three, the winners. So if you are one of our winners, you can get in touch with me. And then uh, email me your name, your address, and your phone number, and we can arrange how uh, you will get your gift, courtesy of uh, Pick for Five Says. Oh, five, so, after this, show. so that has been Axe Pediatricians for today. Thank you so much for joining us. If you still have questions, go to Axe the Pediatrician Facebook group and you can drop your questions there. You can always support us. You can donate to our accounts. Uh, we are not for pro we're non for profit. Um, so we do a lot of outreaches. So there are many ways you can support Axe Pediatrician Foundation. Um, if you get in touch with us, we will tell you more. So thank you so much for joining us. And goodbye. And have a wonderful weekend. And enjoy the, the, uh, the, the compliments of the season. Is, is this time to start saying compliments of the season now? Yes, it is. Yes, <laughs> yeah. it is. We can. Right. Bye. <laughs> See you. Bye-bye. See you all soon.